Hello, Rim the Most High God. Welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both empower and inform the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 440. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, everyone. Um, we're having some weird weather here lately. I guess you all have noticed that. <laughs> I mean, all across the nation, there's just extremes going on. Um, and an odd thing that happened this week is I was watching a video where some meteorologists were watching some anomalies on the radar. And at certain times, like at this, this disk of energy would appear with a hole in the center. They kind of looked like clouds. And, and certain times it was like over the central U.S. Sometimes it was overall. Sometimes it looked like there were just hundreds of them just come out yeah, of nowhere. Just ca- and so they were, they were trying to, and they said it was. They said it might have been gamma energy from uh, solar flares. Um, but I, I but it, was, it was like a generated thing. It wasn't, it was very odd. But it, what I, was, I thought it was like a, a microscalar bubbles that were just, that were, were being bombarded. But they would have like that hole in the center. Yeah, which you'll see it with was, the scalar bubble. It was odd. Uh, but what was strange about that is that it, over the last month or so, there have been times when we'd walk outside and it was such unnatural heat. It was like you felt like you were being just um, microwaved. Yeah, about. just it was horrible. It wasn't natural heat at all because we're used to humidity here in the Ozarks and and you know all high summer temperatures and things. But this was unnatural. So I do think that we need to, to pray extra over that, asking God to nullify the effects of the harp. Um, I actually saw a clip of a woman ex, uh, explaining how that the uh, technology that they can use as even a part of mind control, like it, like she was explaining that um, how they could make a person just start hating another person in their home and make it where they could just split them up. And I thought, well, if you got... Um, evil people in charge of these things you talk about wreaking havoc because i i mean we've seen it in the past years ago when there was such occult activity we we were in you know a hot spot and so we were seeing so much and and they would you could tell they would go after a family go after a minister and something like that and it was like they'd get to where they couldn't even think it was just such a bombardment on them and um well you know we watched one video with uh dr bill snubblin it was from the prophecy club that uh, during the, you know, remember with the Columbine where you had all the shooting and everything, mm-hmm. they went back and looked at radar. And whenever you look at radar, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see it like a bubble. Now, if it's kind of like blocked out around Area 51, it'll be like a solid black bubble. A scalar bubble almost looks like the kind of bubble you blow that you can see the ring, but you can see through it. There was a scalar bubble over Columbine during that day of the shooting. And so they have they have been using this for a long time. And uh, some of the things we need to realize is that when we look at what we have, let's say, with the Heart Project, it's second or third generation scalar energy. Russia has maybe 20th generation. And they were talking back in the 1950s how that they could neutralize uh, atomic weapons being fired at Russia back then. And I have wondered, you know, scalar energy, since it, it travels in subspace, it's kind of hard to figure out where it originated from. It's almost kind of like a cyber attack. I mean, uh, we're have. I mean, we're seeing problems with phones and just all this, all this crazy stuff. Yeah, that's we've going had on. that here recently, to where like the cell phones are acting weird and uh, all of it. I, I think it's because because I think that we're under major cyber attack. I think they're pulling out all the non traditional weapons of warfare, and Scalar would be one of them. Oh, it would be. I mean, they're going to use anything that they can use because. Uh, I believe we're at that pivotal point where um, the future of our nation's in the balance. And so Satan's going to do anything he can. And he especially wants to disarm a Christian family. And so a lot of times when that woman said that about, you know, make some, you hate somebody in your family, um, even when we have a tiff, you know, or disagreement or something, and there's you can feel stress, a lot of times we'll just stop and bind witchcraft and, and ask forgiveness for sins, break the power of it, command it to go back, and it'll, it'll ease up. And so um, we've learned that through the years because there, there's a constant attack on the family because if, if Satan can divide the mom and dad 
and get them to not pray in agreement and take authority in, in unison, then he's got a, a stronghold established to come against the family. I remember way back in the 80s, uh, David Wilkerson was flying on an airplane, and, and he got to talking to this one guy, and, and the guy kind of refused the meal. And he said, I'm fasting. And come to find out, the guy was a Satanist. And he said, this day, every week, Satanists fast all over the world for the destruction of the nuclear family, of what we call the traditional mm-hmm. family. And so, I mean, this, this is something that they have been putting into place for decades. And, uh, you know, while a lot of times we Christians, we, we, we tend to be very short-sighted. The enemy has very long-range plans, mm-hmm. and, and, his, and his minions uh, work with those plans. And they'll, they will plan, uh, um, you know, I, I document in, in the Shonar Directive how that they were waiting. Uh, they, they knew the watchers were going to be begin being released at the, tw- at the beginning of the 20th century. So they implanted uh, mind viruses of evolution, eugenics, spiritism, and I think even technocracy uh, into the consciousness of the world to prepare. And it, it, back then it kind of it kind of all came together in Nazi Germany. Right now I think it's all coming together in China. And, and the, these people will plan hundreds of years ahead of time. That's why... We have got to learn to flow with the Spirit of God because the enemy is strategic. But the only one more strategic than the enemy is Almighty God. Mm-hmm. And when we learn to flow with God, and sometimes we don't, may not even understand, you know, it's like, why, why is it when we feel a tip that we need to immediately respond spiritually? Because we're flowing with the Word, because God put these things in the Word, because He knew how strategic the enemy was. And it, it's, it's beyond our ability to be that strategic. But if we'll simply obey the word and obey the spirit of God, we'll trip up his strategies over mm-hmm. and over and over again. That's why understanding spiritual warfare is so important. That's why many of the dynamics of what we're going to be talking about today are so important mm-hmm. because it, it begins to derail. Uh, because although the enemy is, is the, the Bible says Lucifer is perfect, he is perfected in warfare. God also limited him, not only through time, but the Bible says that he is limited to those things that are only common to man. So he, he can't pull something out beyond, let's say, what happened in Genesis 6 or what happened in Genesis 3 or what happened in Genesis 11. He can't pull anything beyond that, like saying, I'm, I'm waiting to the very end. It's, it's, there, there's like a certain bag of tricks. God says, I am limiting what you can do here. But that's why it's so important to know the word and to know and know who we are in Christ, and to know the the reality that spiritual warfare is real. Oh, it is, and uh, you know I've spent so many years watching uh, the enemy say, and I've actually heard him directly say this to me at different points in in the past. Uh, watch what I can do, and then I'll see something horrible happen. And uh, it's just like he sits back and, and says, see, I get everything done. And uh, I've had to combat that a lot because I have seen so much. Uh, but I also know that there's a point coming. You know, this has been an extended battle. Um, or I should say an extended war with many battles. And there have been battles won. It's just hard to see the effects of it because it's such a such a um, grand scheme that it's hard to to look at that. Uh, it looks like Satan's just increasing and increasing, and and the uh, uh, evil activity is increasing. Um, you know, I've I've seen I've sat and watched this. Seen witches put words in ministers' mouths and then giggle in glee, and I think the main reason is because we don't we just think oh. You know, we can't be influenced by anything. But they it's like they've got a book on us. You know, they, they, uh, they've watched us our, our whole lives. And so they know every shortcoming. They know every way to hit you. And we have been um, ignorant of the schemes of the devil and how he works. And um, God's been talking to me here all oh, about six months or so about praying over his pattern over people. And the only way I can describe that, it's, it's like how Satan has patterns that he uses, like a pentagram, a hexagram, and all these things to, that can invoke power. But there's a, he told me there's a pattern he has over an individual's life that is hidden from the enemy. And I love that. I love to, to think about, you know, Satan scheming and, and working, and he just can't figure it out because he can't understand the pattern. He can't. I mean... 
uh, you know, it, and God put it all in writing even before Jesus came. This is what I'm going to do. I mean, this Isaiah 53 was there the whole time. Couldn't see it. And there, there are some things that are just simply hidden in God, and I, I think there is a current of the kingdom. Then when we get into that current, it hides us from the enemy. There are, there are a lot of scriptures that talk about, you know, that we are hidden in God and, and, and how that there's that secret place. I, I think that's that, what that, that pattern is. You know, it, it's like if you, have, if you have, let's say, a deep stream and, you know, the fish that are above on top of the water, you can easily see where they are and figure out the pattern. But if they're down in the deep currents, you don't, you don't even know where they are. And I, I think the deeper that we go in God, the more secure we are. Oh, I believe that. that. That's why the enemy loves shallow Christianity, mm -hmm. because he can figure you out. He can play you. He has your game book. But the ones that, that frighten him the most are the ones who really get deep in God that become hidden in Christ because their pattern is hidden from mm -hmm. him. And so he's, he's working to get something he doesn't even realize what God's done. And so, so my, my thought was when he told me that is, Father, we come into agreement with the pattern in all of our lives. Yes. In every Christian's life that, that you would work in, in a place that the enemy can't even perceive. And so no matter what you're seeing, you know, we've seen horrible things. We've seen uh, evil building and things going on in our nation that, you know, 30 years ago people would have thought there's no way. Um, I've been watching some videos here lately about uh, kids that were um, transitioned to be like the male that thinks they're a female and they go through surgery and things like that because I want to know how to pray for them. And it is, it is so heart-wrenching to hear what they say. Yeah, fouled but, up surgeries. And because they make decisions when they're young. They, they get to an age and they're saying how they're in so much pain that they can't hardly live, that, that there's, their happiness wasn't there they thought was going to be. And, and what this is is an absolute mutilation of them. Yeah, it is. And we've got to pray that not only this stop, but for supernatural healing for them. It's just, it's just heart-wrenching to, to see what they've went through. You know, I, I think of the Scripture in the book of Revelation where it says when Jesus comes back, he's going to come back for those that destroy, that are destroying the earth. And I, I think that's on two levels. I think those that are, with what they're doing to gain control, to force a one-world mm -hmm. government, they're destroying the planet, and, and they're using scalar energy and a lot of things to do that. But I think there are those that are also destroying the way that God made things, because that's what that's really talking about that God's going to come back with a vengeance on this. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's, not going to, it's not going to remain unanswered. Well, I, I think that there's a lot of things getting ready to change, but we're in the heat of this. And so that was part of what we we're going to talk about here in a minute, about generational curses, and there are people that will dispute it through scriptures, and we're going to talk about that. But I just wanted to talk about a few things that um, I've talked to you before about how... Um, the enemy places people on the points of stars and uses that to invoke high-level entities that can't be in a person, but they can come down and, and use that uh, structure as a, an entry point to come down and influence people, situations. Um, a it lot creates of a portal. A lot of times when if you see one of these families and, and you can perceive that's what's going on, I've watched it through the years. Anybody that goes around them, they'll start having car accidents. They'll start having uh, mishaps. They'll have falls. They'll have all kinds of things because um, – these are, these are not like a spirit that's just usually hanging around us here on the earth, you know, like spirits that are, are messing with you, uh, perverse spirits, anything like that. These are high-level things that have much power. And so they've, and I, I honestly think that it's tied to Freemasonry um, for several reasons. But, but I think like if you are the descendant of someone that's in Freemasonry, the Eastern Star, I think that they they have the capability through DNA to assign you to a point of a star. I think that there are many people that know exactly what they're doing in the occult, realize what that is, uh, actively stand you know on places and invoke spirits. I'm not, and so that's a, a different situation. But these are, are families. I don't even believe they recognize they're being used. I think probably what happens, and and I think I've noticed this, is they get hazed out. When the thing's in operation, 
they get kind of hazy and are, are just kind of, they probably feel depressed. They pro- probably feel uh, disoriented, sluggish. And then uh, the whole time, this thing is gaining entry down here to, for a purpose. And um, I actually, I, now this is just, I have asked many people. Nobody's ever heard of this. This is just something that I have perceived. And so you just can't go on that, you know. So I asked God uh, in the last year, I asked him, to give me a confirmation that this that this is real, that this is going on, that it's something I can actively pray about. And I wasn't sure even how to pray. Um, so in a particular situation, uh, I thought, I'm going to pray this and see if this affects things. And man, did it have an effect, didn't it, Mike? It did. Mike and Steffi witnessed the same thing that, that I did. And so we'll, I'll just leave it there. I'm just wanting to... Um, give you a heads up on things that nobody talks about. You know, there's a lot of occult activity that people talk about. But the very hidden, hidden things, they don't want anybody to know. And uh, I was I was just reminded of things. I, I walked through a store the other day, and, you know, everything's up for the 4th of July. And, you know, most people just think that's just a grand holiday to um, celebrate, you know, the nation and, and patriotism and things like that. But but there, there was a design there in that flag uh, with specificity, I should say. I mean, it, those stars, the, the colors, it's, it well, has... Even the select of, of uh, the 4th of July, because Cirrus mm-hmm. is directly over Washington, D.C. Right. And it's, it's the Luciferian star, the dog star. And so, you know, what I, I think what the, the Masons did, and this is just my own hypothesis... They, you know, you had the rulers in in Europe that all said they had divine right to rule, and that came from the Catholic Church and all that. And so they went back to a more ancient power, because everything about Freemasonry goes back to Egypt and the and Osiris and all the Egyptian gods. And so whether they realized it fully or not, they were tapping into some very very ancient powers, uh, and and to try to establish things on. And th- this is all throughout this. You know, I, I think not only do you have star families, but, uh, you know, we've also run across that you can have uh, bloodlines that they'll take one person out of the family and they'll be connected maybe even across the country using that same star system or something similar. Mm-hmm. It's based because, on geometric structure. Because principalities, and this is one of the things that we ran across in all the research, that there have been those that have tried uh, in, in the Illuminati to hold principalities and their bodies cannot take the energy. They literally spontaneously combust because they're, they're, it's too high yeah, of a power. It's too high a level. That's kind of wonder. I think that's why I, that even when Nimrod returns, that it's going to be a transhuman body that is manufactured or, or transformed to be able to hold that level of energy. And what, what they... Um I think what they prefer to use is five females. I think that that there's energy that can come from five females standing on on a pentagram or you know a hexagram. I think the hexagram would be uh, something that they would use in Mount Zion programming. Yeah. I um I think it's it's based on DNA and I this now this is just one of my things that I can't prove that I've just these things just come to me as I'm praying. Uh, is that I think they've taken DNA and put it on in satellites to to take it up to the heavens. I mean, it's it's a weird thing, and I I don't even understand all of it. I'll just tell you that. But I I have seen enough now that I feel uh, safe in just telling anybody: if you are a Freemason descendant, if you are a descendant of of witchcraft, um, you know somebody maybe a, the Illuminati. Uh, now the Illuminati bloodlines, they probably would train those people. To know what they're doing, or a part of them, if they, you know, if they've been made into different personalities. Uh, but my thought is, is if you think at all that there's any way your family's been involved in that, the way to pray it would be to ask God to forgive any sin that's created a structure and placed you on it or your family uh, on that. And then I would just um, take the sword of the spirit and cut the tethers. And say we we separate ourselves by the blood of Jesus, by the power of His name, from any structure, and forbid anything to access us. That nothing can take 
uh, take a part of our soul out or or put anything in our soul or just you know bind the the king of darkness from using you because that's what this is it's it's they're just pawns i think most of the people that this goes on with don't know what's going on i think you'd have to see it from an outside source to even recognize it uh but but i mean i've prayed it over myself um because for you know the one time when i i told you that someone set my programming off years ago um, this was when I was, you know, kept telling God, this couldn't have happened to me, God. I don't believe anybody could do this. I don't believe anybody could get me out of my house, and I wouldn't know it. And so he allowed this person to set my programming off. And I knew what they did. I mean, I heard in my head what they set off. And then that night is the night that I've told you about before. I woke up and felt like I was spread eagle in a star and felt like I floated in my living room, although I know I walked. I didn't float, actually. Um but then I got the name of Jesus out, and it broke it. But in in the thought pattern, as I was in this star, is I was supposed to go meet four other women. And so that would have been, I mean, you could be taken, you know, if, if you had done what happened to me, you could be taken someplace and not even know it. Mm-hmm. You know, and you were you were snoring. You were, Nobody would have even known I'd left because I, I came back and started. I uh, had one of those internal earthquakes. It was shaking so hard, and, and I had to wake and, him up and say, there's something weird just happened. And, and ask me if I was real because you had that. I mean, yeah, that was, I said, that was, yeah, it was just, it's so disorienting when you go through that. And so then I just started praying, and, and the shaking stopped, and everything was fine. But but that, that's how real this stuff is. And um, it's, it's those type of things that nobody knows about because – I think it's absolutely key in what's going on. Now, when I walked through this place the other day um, with all the 4th of July stuff, I thought, oh, my goodness. Okay, on the 4th of July, they're going to access the stars that will be connected to the Grand Lodge of each state. And here in Missouri, it's in Columbia, Missouri. Yeah, which surprised me. I thought it had been in you St. Think Louis. It, well, they have huge a huge thing in St. Louis. But anyway, that's what it said on the Internet. And um, I thought, okay, the Grand Lodge. Then they they're given jurisdiction over over All the this, lodges in the state, and so and territories, and however this works. And so I thought, okay, they're going to they could use that to bring down the influence of these high level entities, and totally do no telling what for the, even the upcoming elections. You know, we we've got a governor that we're we're going to be elected. Uh, new governor. Um, we've got the big election coming up in November, and and it just it was just like coming like just one after another. One thought of this is what they're going to do. So um, I think each one of us in whatever state you're in, and uh, God's told me to pray over that day to pray over all the states, and I can do it really quick because they taught me this song. <laughs> When I was in fifth grade, I never have forgot it. It's you can say all the states in alphabetical order, just boom, 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 boom. And so he reminded me of that, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray over all the states. But for your individual state, I think not to come against you know any powerful thing, but just to ask God to forgive the sins that have um, have allowed structures to be built and people to be used as pawns. Um, and to to break that occult power, I think if if people will do that in the state, it's gonna it's gonna totally hinder everything, and that won't put you on the you know the scope of an entity to come after you if you don't don't bind or anything like that. Um, you know, on a personal level, you can cut off anything that they've put you on. On a personal level, you have authority, but when it comes to like territories and things like that, we have to be careful. Yeah, we do. You know, a lot of this. You know, when we start sharing this stuff, I. Sometimes I can see people kind of rolling their eyes, but we need we need to realize several things, and this is it that I've discovered in my own research. You know, we have a lot of people that are being electronically harassed, mm-hmm. and uh, we're we're in an age that everything can be hacked to include DNA, and and DNA. One of the things that came out of Harvard University is DNA has an antenna array built on the yeah, outside of it. It's resonant; has a resonance. And so each DNA, if you can have the code of that DNA, you can send out. Uh, energy waves that will that will absolutely harass that individual. And in fact, uh, some of the evidence I have found is that each mind may have a unique frequency. And so, if you can now, there's there are certain things. I remember Dr. Bigich uh, proved to NATO that there was technology, and and I, I comment on this in the Shiner Directive. They called it the voice of God. 
that they can broadcast it over any electronic instrument. It's, it's like the irresistible voice of God that will appear in the center of your brain. And, uh, and to prove that, he went to basically to a, a radio shack in Europe, kind of a radio shack place, built something, and, dis- and sent a, um, a, a little broadcast through the, uh, you know, they, over there they, they have like the, you know, the heating systems, like, that are like the old radiators. And so he used that to broadcast, and he basically said something harmless. Everybody leave the building and go get a cup of coffee. And what, to the horror of the, of the leaders of NATO, everybody emptied the building and went down to local coffee shops mm-hmm. within minutes. And so there, there, there is actually regulations in NATO outlawing that type of, of weaponry in, in military warfare because you could actually cause enemies to begin turning on themselves. Well, I, I think that, we're, that they're covering up that very thing. Yeah, and, and and I mean that was like that was like back in the nineteen nineties. Yeah, My that, word, what do they have now? You know, what do they have today? Exactly right. Well, I just wanted to to pray over what they've done and just uh, declare the truth that Father, you made the stars and you placed them in the sky. Ask forgiveness for the defilement of your creation by creating stars of dark light for the kingdom of darkness purposes. Father, I ask that you would judge this situation that you would free the people. Father, they're enslaved and don't know it. And we just ask for a mighty move of your hand against this evil. And Father, we stand here on the earth as ambassadors and come into agreement with your judgment over this evil empire. In yes, Jesus' in name. Jesus name. Okay, I wanted to go ahead and give you a heads up on some things that are going on. You know, we've got the summer solstice on June 20th, and, um, and they actually have a Pegot Spirit gathering close to Fort Leonard Wood, where we used to be by. And they're going to have it at the Shrine Camp. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, I didn't know they even had a Shriners Camp. Yeah, that, that's where they had the, the last one. Somebody, I think it was last year somebody told me that they knew that that was going on, and I looked it up, and it was there that time. And what a, that would be the perfect place to have something like that. Well, a perfect though, place to put it would be the place down there called Devil's Elbow. But that's a whole <laughs> <laughs> well, it's close enough. It probably, probably affects everything. Um, but in, anyway, the summer solstice, they always, you know, they celebrate Litha, um, marks when the sun is its maximum power on the longest day of the year. Um, they have all kinds of rituals and things on that day. The 22nd of June, every, every 22nd of the month is significant, like 11, 22, 33 are significant for occult rituals. Then we've got the the 4th of July is the one that I'm the most concerned with, and I think that's that's when Sirius lines up over Washington, D.C. And so I just think it's a really good time for us to pray um, because, you know, you can just see on the news how they're setting everything up. It's just, it just looks like, and I I can never get over, you know, this, uh, the president's son and this trial with him i've never seen anything like this in my life that they're sitting there and they got these witnesses ping pong size uh balls of what what was what drug is uh, it crystal meth i think oh i thought it was heroin or I, well whatever but i mean <laughs> the, the thought that you could be clear-minded enough even in that that period of time to go get a weapon well, see, it was so bizarre well, you see you know it was you know he was doing that before and he was doing that after but you know the month yeah, that, who can the prove? month that he applied uh, for that you know he wasn't doing it who then. could prove um <laughs> it's, it's just ridiculous oh and it, oh. it, it shows you there is there is a two tier uh, justice system going on in America. Well, and that's what I believe God's getting ready to to intervene in is the injustice. Um, and I'm still standing on what He's told me, and I believe it. And I believe that there's going to be a shaking like nothing we've ever seen. But at at the end of it, I think that we can end up at a better place than we are now. And the one thing that uh, God took me to on the scriptures. Uh, was he took me to Ezekiel 18. And that's one of the the scriptures that, uh, I'm going to let Mike talk about this, but if you ever mention generational curses to someone, you know, and you can give the early scriptures like in Deuteronomy and things like that of how the um, those curses go down to the third and fourth generation, somebody usually will mention Ezekiel 18 um, as a counter to that, like that outdid that and so I wanted Mike to talk about that because that's one of the things that we've got to um, really get the word out on as far as I'm concerned as much as we can for this upcoming these upcoming months because the battle is going to intensify 
And so Satan is going to do what he does. He's going to try to destroy anybody any way he can through any means. And and one of the things that he, he loves to do more than anything is um, take something from the past that nobody knows. You know, a lot of people uh, don't even know that they've had Freemasons in their past. And even if they know that they do, they didn't realize that there's there can be curses with it because it's just thought of as a, as a good organization in the Eastern Star. Um, as a you know a godly group of women doing things they don't realize that even those most of those people don't realize that they're being put in the middle of occult rituals and those things you know imagine like if you took somebody out here that was born into witchcraft and you saw their life falling apart you you would think well that's understandable you came from you know people that were in witchcraft you came from people that practice new age you might think that but there are many things that we come from that we don't even realize there's curses. And so if anybody would ever mention to you 18 where it says, you know, um, it, it looks like it counters that. That's a lot of things about the word that I think my mom saw where she always said the word contradicts itself because she, she read the Bible, uh, but she just couldn't understand it. And so I'm just asking God to just raise up teachers. Father, raise up men and women that are um, – schooled in the word and and understand history and all the things that you have to do to be able to put the truth out and so i wanted to ask mike if he'd explain that yeah and in fact i deal with it in in chapter five of the kingdom warrior and i want to start in ezekiel 18 and you can read the the whole chapter but uh, one of the first things they did is, you know, there was there was a proverb that they made up. It's not found in the book of Proverbs. It's not found in Psalms that when a father eats sour grapes, it, it sets his children's teeth on edge, which Hebraically what that means is the children partake of the exact same sin the fathers did. And they were coming against God, weren't they? It, like, it, it, it was, was a, a mocking. Mm-hmm. It was a mocking. And in fact, in starting in verse 25, it says, Yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O Israel. It is not my ways which is fair, and your ways which are not fair. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he had committed and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. Because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed, he shall surely live and he shall not die. Yet in the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not fair, O house of Israel. It is not my ways which are fair and your ways which are not fair. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. And so God is talking about a transition. Number one, they were mocking him. But uh, there, there are certain things that God warned them, you know, like when in a uh, uh, like if you'll follow after other gods, it, it'll go up into the fourth generation. But he said there's a transition coming that I'm, I'm, I'm no longer going to do that. But we, one of the things that we've got to remember, Mary, there are two kingdoms, there are two kings, and there are two laws. Hell has a law. It's called the law of sin and death, or the Torah of sin and death. Mm-hmm. Hell has its, its own Torah. And now God says, listen, he said, no, I, I'm not going to do this anymore, O house of Israel, for I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies. Therefore, turn and live. And we stick with, with Ezekiel, and we think, well, that happened right there at that moment. But it didn't because Jeremiah quotes that same proverb, and it's found in Jeremiah 31. Now, Jeremiah 31 is a very pivotal chapter because he's talking about the new covenant. He directly connects that God will no longer hold the sins of the fathers toward their children in the new covenant. That is because of what Jesus did. And yes, God, you know, God doesn't want to hold the next generation responsible if, if they're trying to seek him. But he's only half the equation. What, what, is, what is the term hasatan? Hasatan means a prosecuting attorney. Satan is a master strategist. And hell has no mercy. In fact, one of the the things that God had me really emphasize is that he says, when heaven forgives, hell never forgets. Remember that there are two kingdoms and two laws that are exactly opposite of each other. Satan has no mercy, and he is a legalist. That if we have an open door, and this this is one of the things, you know, God's not out to get you. He's he's not looking to say, okay, Mike, your, your your granddad was this, and, and I'm going to get you because, because he was a Freemason. But what he is saying is, Mike, 
your granddad was a Freemason. If you don't bring this under the blood, the enemy will use it yeah, against that's, you. Yeah, he warns you. He's telling you. That's why the Nehemiah principle is, is so powerful. Nehemiah was probably one of the most righteous men in Israel at the time. There, They were in captivity in Babylon, and he, and he heard about the, the status of what was going on in, in Jerusalem and that, that, you know, that there were no gates there. And he said, Father, forgive me of my sins and the sins of my father's. <clears throat> that, and in fact, what's interesting is, is after they, you, you read through the book of Nehemiah, and after they did that, and then he leads all, all, of, all of Judah that had returned after they had rebuilt the temple, rebuilt the gates. They, they heard the word read to them all day long, and they wept and they cried, and they repented, and he led them through the exact same prayer. Now, the sages of Israel said that is a watershed event in the nation of Israel. From that day forward, they would never enter into overt paganism ever again. Now, I, th- I think it's covert in what's being done with Kabbalah. But they would never enter into over. That was a watershed event. And part of the sanctification process that we do with the Holy Spirit is we're, we're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And the Holy Spirit will be, you know, uh, I, I think that when we first get saved, we're, we're newbies and we're, we're newborn babes in the body of Christ. And I think there's a certain level of grace. God says, listen, I'm going to back the enemy off of you for a while so that you can learn my word, so that you can learn my ways. And as we study the word, we find out, oh my goodness, there's, there's paganism. There's things that my forefathers did that were against what God did. And, and Father, just uh, please cleanse me of that. If, if, because generational curses can have a spiritual thread, but it can also have a psychological thread. Because those things were taught maybe even in a, in a, a covert way or a tacit way in the home. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like prejudice. You can get little kids. And they want to play. They don't care about the color no, of the don't. skin. It's, Hatred has to be taught. Yeah. Okay. That and it, it's it's in, well they call it environmental psychology. That that environment taught you to hate. That environment taught you this. And so there's this there's this sometimes sometimes it's very said, but sometimes it's not so said. You're, you're just taught these subtle things that this opens up doors to the enemy. And so the Holy Spirit comes in. He says, "Listen, bring it under the blood of Jesus. Anything." Under the blood of Jesus, the enemy can't use as an open door against mm-hmm. you. And one of the things that we have learned is, 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 Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would cover every door in my life, especially those that I don't know that are there. Father, cover them with the blood, and now I'm asking the Holy Spirit to show me what those doors are so that I can permanently close them, whether mm-hmm. I need to repent of something, I need to change an attitude, I need to change a vain philosophy of something stupid that I've been taught that was part of the family environment. And as we begin closing those doors, it begins systematically closing access that the enemy has to our life. God is not our problem. You know, the, why, why, you know what, what, when, when Jesus was born, we have the angels saying that, that there's goodwill toward God and man, and, and there was a herald, you know, God with us. God's not our problem, but the devil is. And if he has anything that he can use against you, he's going to use it against you. Mm-hmm. That, and, but the church does not teach the sanctification process anymore. It doesn't teach for you to examine your family tree. It doesn't. It doesn't teach. Uh, and it, 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 let's, let's let's leave the occult stuff aside. There's a lot of stupid stuff that are taught in families that sets marriages to where they're going. They're going to be eventually derailed. It is, it's going to make relationships hard because that was the attitude of the home. And and let's say certain roles that that were played out because that's what the previous generation had taught. The previous generation had taught that were not biblical. We need to understand that every culture, uh, every you know, and and I don't I don't I, th- I think there's one human race, but I do believe in, in in ethnic differences. And there are good things about many ethnic differences, and there are, there are bad things where the enemy had crept in. And part of the sanctification process is to is to uh, to really accentuate the good things, because those good things will always line up with the Word of God. But also to look at as some, even if some of the things that we have been raised in, in our ethnic cultures and say, these things don't line up with the Word. Therefore, I reject them, I repent of them, and I'm now replacing them with kingdom principles. 
that is a vital part of spiritual growth, and it is missing. We have, we have absolutely abdicated the teaching of this and, and learning how to walk in the ways of God and the commandments of God and, and how to bring every thought captive to Christ. We act as if none of this exists, and I, I think there is a, a pseudo-pride that is, is going across the body of Christ that's setting us up for the great fall. You know, when I, and God had me go back this week and, and read Daniel, where it said that he was wearing out the saints, because I'm, a, lot of, a lot of saints right now are getting wore out. They really are. And it said that he would be given power for a season to wear out the saints, but yet in that same chapter... It talks about those that knew their God and did great exploits. So there's a dichotomy of those that are getting wore out and those that are advancing. And I, I think the, the difference between the two is when you really intimately know God, God starts messing with your life. I mean, he, he gets up in your business and, and, and says, you know, that stinking attitude, if you're going to really flow with my spirit, you need to get rid of that. You need to, you need to get rid of this ideology because it does not line up with the word of God. You, you need to get rid of this because it originated in the kingdom of darkness. And, and, and what I have found is the, you know, the, sometimes when the Holy Spirit first starts, first starts working on us, it's the really big things, you know, because it's like, okay, uh, you got to quit carousing and drinking and smoking dope or whatever. I mean, the list can be big and long. But the uh, the more that we grow in Christ, sometimes it's the, the, the little foxes spoil the vines. It's the little things that we didn't think were really big things as we grow it that can really trip us up. And, it, you know, we've uh, we've been doing some watching and reading of, of some great men of God that, that God had used powerfully, but the end of their lives really was a failure. It and, was horrible and uh, in many instances. Uh, you know, when you when you look at A.A. A. Allen and, and some of the miracles that were in his ministry that were demonstrated, and yet he ended up dying of alcoholism, and 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 you you have so many others. Now, do you think that 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 is because? God is using them, and the enemy comes in. Comes in, and they weren't and, taught and spiritual they weren't warfare. Taught to they, they were, they were, they, uh, and and some, you know, so many of these guys like Branham. I mean, he was he was good when he was just as working as an evangelist, okay. But he began listening to other people that had doctrines that weren't right, and they were better educated than he was. He didn't have the um, theological education to vet this stuff himself. Now. When people like Gordon Lindsay was around him and stuff, they kind of helped kept keep him balanced. Because I mean, he was just he was just preaching the cross and getting people saved and healed, and that was really his vein. And when he stayed in that, he was really good. But then, you know, the, and what's crazy is the enemy used other ministers to get him off. And we, we see this over and over again. Even the Apostle Paul said, he said, listen, after I've, I've done everything, he said, I don't want to be a castaway at the end. And, and this was his greatest concern, that someone with the, the, the caliber of dedication and sanctification of the Apostle Paul says, listen, I buffet my body daily. I, I, I keep examining myself because that, I, I don't want to get to the very end and not be able to finish the race. But the, the theologies that we're preaching today, it's like, well, that's not a worry. All that's, you know... And what it does, it sets us up for defeat. He, he, the Apostle Paul kept a constant watch over himself to make sure that he, he remained accurate and true to what God called him to do because he knew the propensity of humanity to get off. Well, and, and you know, we still have the thought of what's, I think we need to have a firm foundation established in what are the parameters of true prophecy. Yes. And prophetic gifts, the gifts of the Spirit versus... The counterfeit, and, and how and, to tell them apart. And there are a lot of counterfeits. Um, well, to show you the difference, I mean, we, we, we've had guys that will come and they'll tell you how much change you had in your pocket and what you had that afternoon for lunch. Compare that to that, that we were watching A.W. Shambach when that, when that one baby was supernaturally healed. I mean, you, you can't and watch that it. And that was A.A. Allen. That was A.A. Allen that did it. it. And this woman had come to every meeting, and she had told uh, uh, Brother Shambach, she said, listen, I'm, I mean, the baby was born with 26 diseases, was blind, totally had club deformed. feet, yeah. totally deformed. There was, and, it was just a, a club. There weren't toes. And, and, and I mean, that... And, and was blind. He sat and, and watched and, that baby get totally restored. And this is, this is how a true word of knowledge works. 
that this was the that woman had told our Debbie Shambuck, you know, I'm down to my last twenty dollars. If if God doesn't do anything, I'm going to have to go home because I can't afford to be here anymore. And when they called for an offering, the woman ran down and gave her last twenty dollars. During the preaching, the guy stopped and said, "There's somebody here with a baby that had fourteen, no, eighteen, no, no, twenty six diseases, and God's going to heal that baby. Where's that baby?" They brought him up, and he just began to hold and, and pace back and forth and just pray over that baby. And R.W. Shambach said, I watched these eyes. They were milky white. And he said, all of a sudden, it was like pools. And all of a sudden, blue eyes began to appear. And he said, he said I watched the clubs begin to, the, the, that were feet, there were feet, there were clubs. He said, it was almost like watching a silly dough. That's what he said, silly putty. City yeah. putty. Yeah. He said, I watched toes form. And he said, I saw the, the, uh, the shoulder snap into place and the arm snap into place. And that baby had never seen, had never been able to talk, had never been able to do anything. When he set that baby down, ran to its mama, crying, Mama. It was his first words at four years old. At that meeting, everyone in the wheelchair was healed. Everyone on stretchers were healed. Yeah. Every unsaved up. person was saved. That the that in, in front, people threw off their glasses, every everybody threw off their hearing aids. Everybody was saved, healed, and delivered. And that's what happens if God's presence shows up. And, 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 and they, they'll tell you, say, listen, it, it wasn't A.E. Allen, it's just Jesus showed up. But you see, when, when, a true, when a true prophetic word, it's that accurate, but it's always for a kingdom purpose. Right, right. It, it brings the kingdom. If it doesn't bring the kingdom and it's about entertainment and lifting up the prophet, it's not of God. And the, there was a lot probably involved in that. You had a praying mama, I'm sure prayed for years, was determined that she was going to stay there and, and, and see God do a miracle. The faith of the people that were there. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things that would be involved. Uh, but he said that that was the greatest thing that he'd seen. And our W. Schambach saw some things. But, yeah. I mean, that was, that was a wonderful miracle. So, you know, that... Obviously, God moved in that man's and, life, and, there was, and for uh, him to get into alcoholism, that's where, where I mean, he I, I think he that, got a, he got targeted. He got targeted, and and sometimes it, it, you know I look at a lot of these others, and by listening to other believers, they begin to think of themselves more highly than they are. And when you open up your shirt and you think there's a Superman thing on your your t shirt, you're in trouble because. We're nothing but bond servants yeah, in the it. kingdom. We, we serve our king, and, and he will not share his glory with anybody. And when, when all of a sudden, when ministry comes about having mansions or, or, or luxury cars and, and being millionaires and all this, uh, then, then something, something's wrong. Well, Satan will always overdo. Like, he'll make something so flamboyant uh, on the other side, that it makes people just say, "Okay, there's no, there's no real. Then this is just a big scheme, and this is just a money making thing." And it is in some instances. It is. But you know, it's like I know Mary. If, if you know, let's say that uh, somebody donates five million dollars to the ministry. Let's say this this miracle happened. You know what my wife would be doing? Where's hungry babies to feed? I, I know my wife. She'd be she was looking for hungry babies. Well, the first thing I'd say is, now you know this doesn't give you any special preference in this ministry, right? No, it's it's <laughs> because I've seen how that works. Everybody gets oh. treated the same. We try to love everybody, but it, it's not about driving uh, Rolls Royces or whatever. It, it it's about kingdom kingdom endeavors and and putting money really where it needs to be for the kingdom. I mean. We're, we're very diligent, and I know one thing about Mary. She can sit on a dime until it becomes a quarter because that's just the way she likes to do things. And and you, you look for value. You look for, okay, what what is God saying? Well, I pick my things. I pick them, you know, because there's some things that, that if there's anything that we get for the ministry that I think is um, above what the average person would think, like a, like special plates or anything like that for like these the little smaller gatherings we've had and stuff like that, I always make sure that we have the donation that pays for that because there's people donating from all over the place. And, and I know if I was donating somewhere, 
I would want that to go to to feet like like we give to you know Convoy of Hope. We give to Ozark Food Harvest and things like that. If the yeah. if that ministry is donating, and at some day I'm I'm sure we're going to be feeding people. I think that's why God gave us that kitchen. I do too. And but and but I do I I think God wants us to be good stewards. I do too. I and mean, I ask God to show us that every day. One of the things you know we're doing as we're looking at doing this new studio is I'm comparing prices and 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 doing the most affordable way of doing it to to make God's money. Uh, stretch as far as it does so we're not wasting anything because that's that's the last thing you want to do and i i think we've had people go too far over on the other side and, and the other side is they uh they they get the the poor mentality which which isn't very effective either and so but it, it it's all about being bond servants that it's all about the king it's what the king wants it's not really about us it's that we have been privileged to be a part of what he's doing in the earth and can't do a thing without him. Can't do a thing. I mean, that's him. probably why me and you would be somebody that that he could use is because we know we can't. Do <laughs> There's no doubt. We're mud There's ducks, no and we doubt. will not lie. <laughs> well, and, I, and not that we think lower of ourselves because God, yeah. God, we're God's creation. We can't get into false humility. But well, at the same time, I'm well, telling false you, false humility is the other side of pride. Right. And and you know we we just know that we're we're earthen vessels that He chooses to use, and because of that. And I think I think that no matter how, uh, especially the more that God uses you, the more you have to work to stay in balance. And, and I do think I do I do want to add too that I I don't think that God expects us to live just in poverty and not no. have what we need. I, it's clear in His Word He wants to meet our needs. I just think the body of Christ has got off to where their needs are like grandiose, like mansions and well, it, it, extravagance is for heaven. Okay. Yeah, know. we're waiting. When, when I get to heaven, he can get this as extravagant as he wants. Uh, but here, it, it's it's you you want to get something that's decent that's going to last because that's also a way of protecting uh, what you invested in. But I, I, I think even even other than that, it's it's making sure that we remain humble before God. I think the more that we realize that we are His bond servants. Uh, Look at look at the life of Moses. Moses was raised to be in Pharaoh's court. He was raised to be a prince of Egypt. God put him on the backside of the desert until something happened to him. He went from being very arrogant to where the Bible says he was the most humble man on the planet. The most humble man on the planet went and took a nation down with nothing but a rod because he remained hum- he remained humble. And because of that, he also, Israel saw the miracles of God. Moses understood the ways of God. Mm-hmm. And Jesus humbled himself and became a servant. He's he's our he is our prototype, if you will. He is he is the he is the what we're to be forged into that we are we are his servants in the earth. And you know, part of that is learning the way of his house. I can't serve Jesus as if I was still in the house of Babylon. Whether it's my attitudes, whether it's my concepts, or, or my, even my affiliations, all that has to be brought under the blood because the more it's brought under the blood and more sanctified I am, the more easily it is for him to use me. And then whenever he does use us, our, our response needs to be even greater sanctification because we know the enemy is going to come in to stop it because we become a threat. And Mary, I, I long to see the gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing the way they're supposed to. I, I long to see... Uh, times of great revival. No gimmicks. We don't, we don't need the feathers or gold dust falling or whatever. What what I need falling are sinners falling to the floor and getting right with God. That that's what I long for. Well, and and it's you know as far as me and you, we, God just gave us the you know the ministry to watch over and caretake this place. But if somebody gives a dollar to this ministry, they're a partner. Yeah. And and they all are prayed for all the same. And I, I think there have some that have never given a penny. But they have, have prayed, prayed for and us. they and see they're and right precious. there too. Yeah, they're right there. Those are the partners. And I don't think we've ever got it on tape, but we try to make sure that the everybody that's at the conferences knows that this this was all provided by partners. Yeah, and how much we appreciate them and and it's. Uh, one of the things I'm asking everybody to pray for, we're, we're, you know, we're in the process of setting up the other studio and getting the things, and we're going to 
slowly convert to where even the kingdom uh, intelligence briefings done video. But I'm, I'm really looking about how to exactly to reboot Biblical Life TV. And I, I think what I'm going to do uh, as I'm working on this new book, Journey Out of Babylon, is once we get it set up, I think I'm going to teach chapter by chapter first through, through the kingdom priesthood. And then as I develop new books, I'll, I'll be teaching through them because I, what, you know my vision is we, we, we've got a lot of fellowships and a lot of small groups all around the world uh, that use, like they, they use the Understanding the Kingdom series. And so they can have the book in hand and have the video teachings, which we'll put for free on our Rumble station, Rumble slash Biblical Life TV, uh, that they can watch. And because I, I think that God is saying that we as a people need to dig deep in the Word to make sure that our foundations are right in God. Oh, we've got to. Because we're getting ready to enter into the greatest time of deception that humanity has ever seen. And the only way to overcome that is to really know God and to really know his word. Yeah, that's true. And so uh, when we we get everything set up, we're just, and I'm not going to worry about the clock. I'm just going to teach through a chapter. And if I can do a chapter in 45 minutes, (laughs) or if it takes me an hour and a half, I'm I'm just, I'm just going to teach through a chapter at a time and, uh, and then put them out there and just so that people can have them. And I, and I encourage you, you know, download them. I'll also do the, the audio version where you can, uh, download it and, and put it on a hard drive because I think there's going to come a time, Mary, that when the world, when the new world order goes into effect, they've got a single algorithm that they're going to flip. Anything associated with Christianity is going to vaporize off the internet overnight. That's why. That's why if you you have someone that is really teaching the word, back up everything you have. And I, one of these days, a, a little USB drive that that may have a couple of hundred Bible teachings on it may be worth its weight in gold in the body of Christ. And so, you know, prepare for it. And, and if it doesn't happen, you can hand it down to the next generation. Uh, just imagine with, even with, uh, if someone had all the old teachings of Lester Sumrall, because right now you can't even hardly find them anywhere. Uh, boy, that'd be worth something, wouldn't it, to have a hard oh, drive with yes. everything it has. And just hardback books. I'm yeah. just really in favor of that because even when we're gone, you know, if we're, uh, the books and the buildings are here, somebody could stumble in here and and get saved, you yeah, know. No, they that can. And, and, and I, even though I, even with the Kindle, and I, I enjoy the Kindle scrap that I have because I can make the lettering really big. Things keep on shrinking the older I get, you know. But, you know, they can run an algorithm through and rewrite your book and you not even know it. And one of these days, all of a sudden, everything in print that's digital, will be, it'll be like, uh, 1984. Okay, everything all of a sudden is politically correct with whatever. So they could, with a flip of a switch, they could have an AI rewrite everything that's digital, to where all of a sudden your books you're saying what you never said, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it becomes something else. But if you have a hard physical copy, can't change that. It's forever that that's way. That's right. That's a good idea. Well, Father, we just thank you for all that you're doing. Father, we we thank you that you have brought us into the kingdom for such a time as this. Father, there is no machination that the enemy can do, no strategy that he can implement that your kingdom cannot outdo. That's right, Father. It's a matter That's of right. us applying the blood, working with in tandem with the Holy Spirit for personal sanctification and for us digging that well that we have with you deep. And Father, I think you're calling us to a depth individually that we have never imagined. This is the time, Father, to dig deep, and we ask that you would give us the grace of your spirit to dig deep, to discard everything of Babylon, and to hold on to Jesus with both hands in this this time and this period. And Father, we just thank you, and we praise you for it, in Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. 
please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.